Howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome back to Wobble and Joy Sports. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider to like the content and subscribe to the channel. But if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Without further ado, here comes my ladder predictions for 2024 in the NRL season. Just a couple of pointers though, obviously this is just my opinion. I hope I don't offend you with it, but this is just my opinion. I'm entitled to it just as much as you are entitled to your own and second of all, this is going to be the hardest top eight to make ever. This is going to be such a difficult season to try and just work out. So I'm going to do my best right now. Let's see how I go. I say this with a lot of love and respect. My dad is a West Tigers fan, but unfortunately, someone's got to get it. I think the West Tigers are going to cop their third straight wooden spoon, unfortunately. They are well and truly fighting from that far down the well. Uh, I'm sorry, West Tigers fans. I think you're going to cop it. But in saying that, this year could be a year where 15, 16, and 17, they all very well could finish equal on competition points and it will just be for and against that will absolutely determine who genuinely gets the wooden spoon and I think that's what will probably be the case but in that, in saying that I think it will be the West Tigers that will have the worst at for and against in any event I'm sorry Tigers fans I think you're going to get the third spoon in a row coming in at number 16 on my NRL ladder are the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs they too are coming from very far down the well and I just don't think that their halves combination is going to be crisp enough to get them uh, out of the bottom four. Stephen Crichton is a hell of an acquisition. Touch with the Viliami Kikau has a hell of a lot more game time under his belt. Um, and just in the preseason trials that I've seen, they look like they're going to be a hard, hard team to try and defeat in any event. But I just don't think that they've got the points in them um, in 2024. Coming into number 15... It's exactly the same bottom three as what it was in 2023. I don't think there's much movement at all. St. George Illawarra Dragons are going to be team number 15 on my NRL ladder. They probably will have one or two more wins um, in their season for 2024. I think there's going to be a little bit of a gap between 15 and the bottom two. The Dragons, they had a, a period there where they lost five games in a row in 2023 by six points or less. I think that they can get a little bit better in that department. Um, under Shane Flanagan, there's no way that the Dragons are going to win the wooden spoon. There's no way that that's going to happen. So uh, St. George Laurie Dragons, I think you do avoid the spoon. Uh, he's hoping that Carl Flanagan works out very well four years in the 5'8 position. From this point on, genuinely in my opinion, from Team 14 all the way up, I think everyone, anyone can make the top eight. I genuinely believe that, including this team, and it kills me to say it, but it's going to be the Canberra Raiders that have a big fall from grace. I think they're going to situate uh, spot number 14 on the NRL ladder in 2024. I think they will have a red hot period in 2024, but I think maybe with the final eight weeks or so, it is a difficult uh, run home for them. And I think just the youth, while they will be exciting, they'll be blistering at times. I think just they're all going to have to get used to the arduous regime that is week in, week out, home and away every single week, um, alternating. Uh, I think that's going to take a toll on them. And I think they might have a very hard end of season run, uh, which will cement them into n number 14. But again, I think there's going to be a gap between 14, 15, and then definitely the bottom two. But again, let me just say, if the Raiders youth backline, youthful backline, if they all click like they've shown in the preseason challenge over the past fortnight, if the Raiders get lucky and they all stay healthy and they play their best and the Ford pack gives them enough of a platform, I mean, watch this space, man. Seriously, watch this space.
Team number 13 are the Dolphins. Uh, Preseason challenge, we saw that Tom Gilbert unfortunately went down with an ACL injury. I think the Dolphins, there's just so much movement, so many new faces in that squad. I think it's still going to take a little bit of time to gel. There's just way too much talent in that team uh, for them to be a bottom four side. But I just don't see them quite cracking the top eight just yet. Again, in saying that, though, just because they're in 13th position doesn't mean that they're four wins away from outside of the top eight. They very well might finish two wins outside of the eight, genuinely. And the same could be said about the Raiders, who I've put in as team number 14 on my ladder. Team 12 are the Parramatta Eels. This is a really weird one because they defeated the Penrith Panthers twice last season. Both teams were at full strength. It is the concern about the depth. I really don't know what's going to happen come origin time. I think they will probably drop a game or two. Um, Parramatta Eels, I just don't get a hell of a lot of confidence from them, unfortunately. Um, or I don't have confidence in them in 2024. I don't know why. I'm just not vibing with the Eels. But they very easily, quite easily could make the top eight in 2024 after having a bad year in uh, 2023 making the GF in 2022. They very well could bounce back in 2024, but unfortunately, I'm, I just, I'm not vibing the Parramatta Eels, unfortunately, this season. Number 11 on my NRL ladder for 2024 are the Gold Coast Titans. I think that their start to the year, uh, without David Fafida and Jaden Campbell, while their start to the year uh, fixture-wise and strength of opposition works out really nicely, um, I think that it's still going to hinder them a little bit. They are very susceptible to losing a game out of Belmore against the Bulldogs. I think they're susceptible now to a loss against the Dragons in round one because round one does feature um, upsets every single season in the early rounds too. And I just think under Des, maybe that they need a full-on year, not just pre-season, a full-on year of Des's tough love uh, before they have everything worked out synchronized and then in 2025 watch this space i just think that this might be one more year of growing pains even though there's so much talent and the likes of an aj brimson tino while they're youthful they've got experience i just think under des maybe it just will be so much of a shock to the system that they won't get into the top eight but again in saying that i've got them in 11th position that might see them miss out on the top eight maybe Maybe, just by foreign against alone. Manly Ring of Sea Eagles, I'm choosing to go with at number 10. It is a much better roster than what was trotted out last season. I'm just not convinced on Anthony Seabold as a coach just quite yet. Yes, a lot of it does depend on Turbo's fitness as well. Um, Talatau Kola and Ruben Garrick as well. Hopefully that that new centre combination moving forward um, is going to be blistering, and it should. And I think Luke Brooks will have a really good year under DCE. Again, this team could just miss out on the top eight due to for and against alone. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. Uh, I just think that they will just miss out. I mean, again, this is the hardest top eight to miss. A lot of people have got Manly in their top four. A lot more people have got Manly inside the top eight. Me, I've just got them. I've just got them missing out. I don't know what their defense is going to be like. And team number nine, missing out by the barest of margins, possibly on only a dozen for and against points. I've got the Newcastle Knights just dropping out of the top eight. I do personally think that Dom Young is going to be a massive loss for them. Sure, Jack Cogger coming in is great. Who misses out? Tyson Gamble had a career year last year. Jackson Hastings was super important. So there might be a little bit of swapping and changing for the Newcastle Knights in the halves uh, department as well. There is that question um, of concern in the second row. Tyson Rizal is on his day an elite back rower, but he has been a little bit inconsistent, in my opinion, over the past three or so seasons. Um, maybe inconsistent is a little bit too harsh of a word, but I just, I want, I just would, ho I hope to see one more super strong year from him. It's just his other partner in the second row. Who's that going to be? It looks like it could be Dylan Lucas. Um, I don't 
think the Newcastle Knights are going to make the top eight. I think they're going to be one loss worse, potentially, uh, than what they were last year, sort of a thing, which would even put them into the top eight. Someone's going to miss out. Um, I think, unfortunately, Newcastle do just drop off and just miss out through a bit of bad luck. Shifting into the top eight now, just scraping in. I think they've got just a little bit more points in them. I think maybe their defence might be a little bit better than Newcastle, but it's seriously the barest of margins. So everybody in the bottom nine of my predicted top eight, please, I hope you're not offended. It's just going to be so hard to make the eight, and it's just my opinion. Um, I think the Cronulla Sharks are going to just snare, snare uh, eighth position on the NRL ladder. Um, and it's, I, I think they snare it because Coach Craig Fitzgibbon, Nico Hines, uh, and I think Braden Trindle is in for a true breakout season in 2024. Um, I, I just think a little bit of that finals experience a little, and the finals experiences that they've had in the past couple of years, yes, they've gone winless in those, um, but I think there's a certain fire ready to rock and roll with them. Um, if they do make the eight, watch them to possibly win a game in week one. Um, there's not much roster movement, but that same roster on its day is a top four attacking unit. It's just defensively uh, that I have concerns about with them. So I think Cronulla just near a top eight position. Team number seven. I'm going to go the South Sydney Rabbitohs. I think the Rabbitohs re-enter finals in 2024. Just the team on paper uh, is way too good. But I think what keeps them out of the top four is the loss of Campbell Graham. They do have the loss of Tyron Munro to overcome. And I think they're going to have a slow start to the season. Um, there's still questions on Latrell Mitchell's consistency. Um, I, I have a... Not an unpopular opinion, but I am in a certain camp when it comes to Latrell Mitchell. I hope nothing but the best for the dude. I hope he ends up winning the Dalian one of these days. Um, so there's just a massive question um, of consistency um, on Latrell Mitchell this season. The same can be said for Cody Walker and uh, Damian Cook as well. Even though at times Cody Walker was on absolute fire. Um, yeah, I just think South Sydney. Um, I think... There's just a bit too much grey area, but on paper, they should be a top four team. But I think that due to the fresh injuries and their rough start to the year, I think that that slow start to the season, while they're over, while they're capable of overcoming it, I think they will finish in the bottom half of the top eight. Team number six, in my opinion, come back in a big way, and I think they're going to be one of those sides that you do not want to face in finals footy. My North Queensland Cowboys, I think. The only question of concern for me is their defensive capabilities in the preseason challenge. Yes, it was a C-string side versus an A-string Brisbane Broncos, but they did leak 44, 46 points. And then against the Canberra Raiders the week after, Cowboys were an A-plus side and they still leaked 26 points. So still got to see a little bit more. But um, that the depth that we've got, uh, I think that the points that we can score in the blink of an eye I think we're a dangerous footy side and there's no reason to suggest why they can't even be a top four side besides um, the defensive capabilities um, and consistency of the squad. I, I genuinely think the Cowboys return to finals in 2024. Even though I think Cowboys are always a chance of winning the premiership, from team five upwards, we're talking fair dink in Turkey about who I reckon can appear on the grand final and win the whole damn thing. And team number five on my NRL ladder is going to be the Melbourne Storm. I nearly I nearly chose somebody else, but I do think the Melbourne Storm, they had their worst offensive season pretty much ever, or at least the first time in 20 years. Um, it was their worst offensive effort. They do have a new inclusion or two. Let's look at the likes of a Sean Bloor, for example. Will he shore up? Uh, will he tighten up that defensive line? Potentially, potentially he will. He is a very good player. There's not too much movement, though, for the Melbourne Storm. They do become a try or two better team with touch everything would. Ryan Pappenhausen has an injury-free run. His preseason challenge, he's been one of the standout players uh, over the past fortnight. If he can stay on the paddock, the Melbourne Storm are a genuine chance of winning the grand final this season. 
I just think that four teams up above them might be a win better or just on throwing against alone a little bit better. But Melbourne Storm, man, I've got them in fifth coming into 2024. My top four starts at fourth. And I've got the Eastern Suburbs finishing in the top four. And it is a huge year for the club. Uh, they're going to have fair income salary cap space to play with uh, in the off-season or from uh, November 1st. And you've got the likes of Joey Manu, Joseph Suali'i, Jarry Hargreaves, Angus Crichton, just to name four of them who are all off contract, who are all going to be leaving East at the end of this season. Um, I'm not sure. I was thinking maybe Daniel Tupper, but I think he's got one more year left on his contract. I think, um, if not anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is that those four mega stars are really want to go and leave uh, the Roosters on a great high. And what greater high would there be? Could there be? There isn't than to feature on Grand Final Day and win the Premiership. I think they're going to go berserk. I really think they're going to go berserk in 2024. Um, I don't think they're going to be unbeatable though. I've got them in fourth position. Um, it is a, it is a strange, it's a strange sort of atmosphere that's going on at the Eastern suburbs. Hopefully they have an injury free run as well. Um, in 2024, because the past four or five years, they've been decimated through injury. What's out in the friggin' water out of the, um, out of Bondi there, bloody Robbo. Um, but I've got East, I've got East finishing fourth in 2024. Improving by a single run in 2024 are the New Zealand Warriors. I think that the pre-season challenge, I think that they have a huge case that they could have been the most impressive side that didn't win, um, or just the most impressive side full stop over the past fortnight, with the inclusion of RTS, who has looked magnifique, uh, and the other depth signings, Kirk Cabral, his performance this past weekend was sensational. I think the New Zealand Warriors, with Aidan Fanua Blake leaving at the end of the year, um, Sean Johnson potentially, I think, at the end of this season as well. Uh, dude, if there's any time that they're going to do it, if there's any time the Warriors are going to win the Premiership, it's going to be this year. They've got the squad to finish inside the top four, and I'm going to go with the New Zealand Warriors to finish third on the NRL ladder. Second on the ladder, Brisbane Broncos. They have a lot of shifting. Um, in, in, they've had a lot of shifting uh, throughout the off-season. Flegler, Herbie Farnworth, just to name a couple. Um, but this pre-season challenge, even their C-string side were pretty bloody impressive, weren't they? Um, but I think the Brisbane Broncos have the toughest run, but they are maybe the premier. Excuse me, the premier side of the competition. Um, so while they have the hardest run, they are arguably the hardest team to fight. So I think that they can overcome that. So that sort of evens itself out um, just a little bit. Um, but in saying that, though, I think they're still a youthful side. They're still a young side who got all the experience necessary to take the next step last season, including the loss in the GF. I'm going to take the Brisbane Broncos to uh, sit atop second position on the NRL ladder at the end of the season, which means, once again, Penrith Panthers, they are my minor premiers. There's just no slowing down this machine. There is no evidence to suggest why they can't go four in a row for the first time since the Dragons of the late 60s and 70s. Um, they're very capable of doing so. So who do I think is going to play on grand final day? Well, genuinely, from team eight through to team one, I think everyone that makes the top eight this year regardless of my top eight or your top eight, anyone that makes the top eight this year is a genuine chance of not only playing on the big day, but also winning everything um, come the first Sunday of October. And I can't go past Penrith Panthers. I don't think many people are going to go past Penrith. So I've got Penrith locked in as one of the combatants. And yeah, we could see a grand final rematch, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I just don't think Brisbane will get there. It's just a vibe thing. It's just a vibe thing. Sorry if I offend you in saying that, if you're a Broncos supporter, but I just don't see them returning back to grand final day. Um, so who will? I don't think the Roosters will either. I don't see them playing on GF day, but they're very capable of doing so. I genuinely believe it's going to be a Penrith versus Warriors grand final for 2024. 
This is the year that the Warriors absolutely need to do something if they're going to win it. Um, with Aiden Fanil Blake particularly leaving at the end of the year. Um, yeah, this is the year for the Wise. Penrith, they've still got the roster. They've still got the mentality and the attributes to do so. I'm going to go a Penrith Warriors Grand Final. Or I'm going to go either a Penrith Cowboys or I'm going to go a Cowboys Warriors Grand Final. And I'm telling you, I do believe the Cowboys can do it this year. I think if they do make the eight, they're going to be that side you don't want to take on. I think they're going to be so dangerous if everything falls into place for them. They were a top four side in 2022. I know they slid down last year, but there's no reason to suggest why they can't bounce back. So I think it's going to be an amalgamation of a Penrith Warriors Cowboys trifecta triangle. Um, but at the moment, Penrith versus Warriors, hand on heart, is leading that. But, dude, if it turns out to be a Cowboys-Warriors grand final, dream come true. That is like my dream grand final. God damn, I hope that happens. And I think it's a genuine possibility too. Thank you very much for the continuous support, guys. The season is here, or it starts this week. How wild is that to say? How exciting is it? The NRL season starts this weekend. Thank you very much. Enjoy the footy. See you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Take care. Adiós.